There are some people nowadays, in the end of times, they think they are ruling the world. That's just a wishful thinking, believe me. They have the money, they have the, the wealth, they have the power, they have bought people in high places and influential places. They bought them with money and placed them there to do and fulfill their evil agendas. In this, they think they can do whatever they wish and get away with it. It is a wishful thinking. This has never happened, never will happen, because at the end of the day, there is only one king and one ruler and one judge over everyone and everything, and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. No one rules except him. No one, my beloved. So they can do whatever they want. They won't go very far. The grave is awaiting them. And when they go into that grave, judgment is fulfilled upon them. Judgment, my beloved. Now, out of, if you do not believe that he was crucified in the days of Pontius Pilate and was buried and rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written, you're in deep trouble. If you do not believe that he ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of his father and he will come back again to judge the dead and the living, you are in deep trouble. Iron rod that will rule over everyone who has rejected the truth. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord says through Isaiah the prophet, I have walked through the winepress my, by myself alone. He went through the winepress. You know, before they used to crush those grapes by foot. There was a, a little pond. They would put all those clusters in there and then step on them and crush them. And it has vents. And then the, the juice comes out and then they make wine out of it or, or, or grape juice out of it. He said, and he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. It is he himself will come to judge those who have rejected him. Even our beloved Muslims say that Isa, Isos, Jesus will come to judge the dead and the living. If Jesus is a prophet and he will judge everyone, isn't God the judge? My beloved friend, don't you believe that God is the judge? Now, if God is the judge and this is a prophet and he will judge, then where is God? Where is God? I just wonder. And last verse, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. My question to all of us, how do you know this person is a king? when they dress up in a kingly outfit, correct? Now, let's say when you look at a, at a man and he's dressed up and thus, that outfit tells you that this is the king. It's a royal outfit. Imagine we bring this king and we strip him of all his clothing and we leave him naked. Would people know this is a king? They won't. The only time you recognize a king by the outfit he puts on, correct? But look at the Lord here. He says, and on, and he has on his robe and on his thigh. When will you see the man's thigh? When you strip him of his clothing, true or not? 
So on his robe and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What this verse is trying to say, that Jesus Christ is always king when they took him on the cross fully naked, and he is king when he is fully dressed up in his kingly outfit. He was king on the cross, and he is king in his second coming, in his first coming, from the very beginning till the end and forevermore. He is the king. Whether dressed up or naked, he is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. When they crucified him, he was reigning and ruling. Before the crucifixion, he said it. He said, if it wasn't my father who gave me this, you wouldn't have been able to capture me. It is I who put it and it is I who take it away. I am willingly going into the tomb, but I am coming out of the tomb also by myself. Why? Because I'm the king. I rule. You thought you got rid of me. You thought you stripped me naked. You thought you kicked me, punched me, and slapped me, and whipped me, and nailed me on the cross. All of that time, I am the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because I came to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's why I allowed you to do it. I am the one who ruled. Even when you nailed me on the cross, I was ruling over you. In my utmost weakness, I am the king. And utmost mightiness, I am still the same king. Nothing can change that. I'll always be the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. On the cross, Good Friday, he, was the, he is the king. And on Sunday, resurrection, he is the king. In his first coming, he is the king. And in his second coming, he is the king. He'll always be the king. You know why? Because the king is born the king. That's why in a country where there is a king, there is no voting. You don't vote a king in, and you don't vote the king out. You only vote when there is a president or a prime minister in that country. That's why we have votings in Australia, in America, in Canada, and wherever there is a president or a prime minister. But when there is a king, you don't vote because the king is the king, whether you like him or not, accept him or not, that never changes. Because whatever you are born with, no one can take it away from you. Jesus Christ is born from his father from the very beginning as the king. So he will always be the king. Whether you drag him in the street or he sits on the throne, he is ruling. He is ruling, my beloveds.